But with a game like SnowRunner, there is absolutely zero replayability. You got done with the, the hardest Russian map. You cleared the whole thing. You want to do it again? No, you don't want to do it again. Good riddance. Get that damn thing out of my sight. So in order for them to get the most hours out of you playing that game, they're going to make you go look for something. Have fun. <laughs> or download Map Runner off the internet and use Map Runner. Have someone else do the dirty work for you. And yeah, Bueller, it's gonna it's gonna change your mindset too. Weapons grade. You came in towards the tail end of the conversation. You didn't hear what I was talking about. But if you want to stick to that one point and run with it, then that's more power to you, buddy. That's what you like to do. What is Map Runner? It's a website that tells you where everything is in the game. Oops. Hold on. God, I don't care. It's a it's an app that shows you where everything is in the game. And you can say you can you can have it look for stuff. You can have it look for points of interest. You can have it look for Watch towers, and you can find everything. It's a giant cheat. What is this station complex? You mean this thing right here? It's our Minmus refueling station. Yeah, the nukes are, are tugs that we made. We had to push this thing out to Minmus's orbit. The this is a tug for a future mission. This is a tug for a future mission. These were tugs that we attached to this to push this ship. And then everything else is, is mission criteria. But yeah, nipple tester, that's going to be what you want to do is if you really want to just... But, but then when you do that nipple te tester, the game's going to get boring. Because once you know where everything is, what's left to do? Drive the truck around? You're, you're, you're going to get bored really, 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 really quick. Bye, half Neum. I'll see you soon. We Weapons grade, are you still here, buddy? You're already bored with the game? Yeah, because you don't want to play it as intended. All right, we got to cool this thing down before we do anything else. Okay, get down to close to 200 or so. Okay, um, <clears throat> let's refuel our ship and get the hell out of here. We got to go back down and do it again. So I want these two, this guy, and that guy. Oh, I think I did it. I, th I think I did do it right. I'll double check it when I get back over. There's no liquid fuel there. Uh, there we go. Wait, what did I do? Oh, I grabbed the wrong tank. Crap. You still enjoyed it to a degree? Well, yeah. It it, it that that's because the replayability isn't there. There's, there's no incentive to go back through and replay all, all the maps because you're like, I've already done this map again. This map sucks. Do we have to do this map? I really don't want to do this map. <laughs> you never seen this game, but I must say it looks interesting. It, it's literally a space simulator, Jiggy. Um, it's a, 
It's a sandbox space simulator. And what it does is it gives you a system that's similar to ours. So like this is the Earth equivalent. This is the Venus equivalent. There's the Mercury equivalent, Mars, Ceres, Jupiter, Pluto. And they have different orbits. And they and, and, and pretty much what they want you to do is they, is they want you to low-key learn rocket science. They want you to explore space. But what they do is they give you missions to kind of force you to do that. And what we've done is we've made a little challenge out of it to where we have to do a certain thing within a certain limit. So what I've done is I've made it to where I all of my rockets or planes that I launched from, from Kerbin, which is our home planet, have to be less than 50 tons. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot if you don't know anything about this game. But when you put things into perspective and you think about it, 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 it it's very, very difficult. I'll, I'll show you why. So this is the vehicle assembly building where you can build a rocket. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build a quick rocket just to kind of show you what a typical rocket, like a big, big rocket would look like. And then I'll, I'll show you something about it. You used to be a rocket surgeon? How you doing, Symmetrical? Welcome in. I was going to ask, but I just saw the reaction. Saw what reaction? What are you asking about? So so let's see here. Let's 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 build a quick little craft without looking at anything, and I, I want to show you something about it. So let's say let's say we're gonna put a payload up here of of something. We're, we're gonna launch a little thing, and it's gonna look like this, I'll build, I'll build the fairing out, okay? So there's, there's nothing there to launch, but let's say we're launching it, and we're gonna put, let's see, a fuel tank here, and then we're gonna do a little bit of, I don't know, this, and then it's gonna look like this. And then we're going to have something that looks like this. And then down here at the very bottom, it's going to look like that. And it's going to have four big boys on it that look like that. Okay? Now, if you looked at this, this looks like a big old rocket, right? This is a rocket that you, you've seen before, maybe in, in, in the past or something. It's a big old rocket. This rocket weighs 453 tons. I cannot launch this in my in my playthrough. In fact, these engines right here weigh five to six tons a piece. So four of those is already half of the allowed mass that I can send up in this challenge. But you can build and ship this all day long if you were playing without any other stuff. So my rockets look like this. Check it out. There's what mine look like. And this weighs 49.978 tons. You can see the tonnage right there. So I have to send little stuff like this out to do the bigger, bigger jobs. So that big station that you saw out there that I'm hooking up to, I built that in space. I built... 60% of it and the game had a bug that wouldn't allow strutting and it kept blowing up So I had to make a concession and put it up there, but but now that the patch is finished I can I can I can do that now But I had to build it one piece at a time and do things one thing at a time So throughout our entire mission We've just been sending Little rockets like this up. This is 49.883 tons this is currently in orbit of Gilly at the moment, which is a tiny moon around Eve. It is a cool challenge, Tactical. Welcome in, buddy. It's good to see you. So, so in doing that, we're having to think small and we're having to think efficiently because we can't just be like, oh, we'll just throw the stack up and ship it out because we can do that all day long. But we, we can't afford to do that in our mission requirement. Yeah, Jack, and it, it, once we got the R&D tree completed, it was easier to, to have better looking stuff because we have to, 
because you you had to kind of make some concessions with with things early career. Like for the longest time, we only had like the um, I can't think of the name of the engine now, but there's but there's one engine, a lifter that's like got a horrible TWR, horrible thrust. And it, it was it was hard to use that because we our TWR was like 1.1 at launch, and it really gave us a, a a fuel loss going up. So let's give you a for instance, um, Jiggy. This is the Venus equivalent. It's called Eve. It has a tiny tiny little moon called Gilly. It looks like a rock. It looks like a a a, a rejected asteroid, just that that got caught in this planet's. SOI. This plan, this little moon has such low gravity that my rover can fly off the planet just from driving. You have to, you love to think small, though it is difficult. Yeah, symmetrical, right? How long have I been playing KSP? I got about 1,300 hours in KSP, and this save, I want to say, is about 100 hours long so far, tactical. How you doing, bro, man? Welcome in. So here's here's my rover. We loaded in. You see it floating away. So check this out. I'm, I'm going to show you something. Let me let me go in here and grab this SAS wheel because we're going to need it. I'll I'll show you the differences in the physics of this game. So right now our reaction wheel is disabled. We have one just in case. Can you even drive it? Yeah. So there's the Gilly Ridge line that we ended up scanning. And then if I end up going this direction, yeah, we we actually drove this thing. We we jumped this cliff right here with it. So here's how fast we're currently going. We're going 0 0.3 meters a second, which is less than probably uh, like a mile an hour, one mile an hour. So so check it out. The wheels are a little spinny because they're lifting off off the ground. But if I take this up too high, look, we're we're floating off of the ground, Jiggy. You see that? All of our wheels are no longer touching the ground, and we're flying because this moon's gravity is so minute. Okay. Careful, you don't accidentally reach escape velocity. Right? Is this Gilly? Yes, this is Gilly. So the torque is starting to take over. We're gonna we're gonna use our control wheel. And yeah, this is Gilly. And that's cool physics. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show you the difference here in just a minute. Let me get this thing to actually settle down. All right, so the control wheel's been turned off. The vessel is down, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna save this and we'll show you the, the, the difference real quick. I, I, can, I can actually just go here. Focus on this. We have a rover here on Eve, which arguably has the most dense atmosphere and strongest gravity. And check this out. And yeah, this, this game often goes on sale for $7.50. It's a $30 game, but it's $7.50 if you want to pick it up, usually on sale. So check this out. Now we're going 30 miles an hour. 40 miles an hour, and we can drive this thing like an RC car. Yeah, Rover Go Bert. And we can pretty much drive it across the city. And this is the same exact Rover. And this is the difference in the physics of, of one celestial body to another one. So we're able to drive this thing around, and we can scan stuff and everything else. And yes, the reason why the Science Junior is at the side is because of the center of mass. The center of mass is perfectly balanced right now. So this 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 rover is pretty pretty level. I wonder if I can go over here and do science in the water. Let's see. Can I do science over here? Eve's shallows. Hell yeah. All right, let's get some battery. Hold on. Extend solar panel. Hello, I would like some battery, please. So I can so I can send some stuff out. I sped the game up, and we, we got some solar power. All right, so we're going to send that. Well, all of our science data is being turned into rep currently. This is free rep, so I'm going to grab it while I can. 
uh, atmosphere analysis. And that's all I can take right now. You can see the battery being drained as we speed up time. Done. All right, cool. Yeah, it's about 2.2 from, from meters a second to miles an hour. Yep. That's why that's why I'm giving you roughs. So like right now we're going like five miles an hour. Seven, eight, it's like 10. Yeah, it's, it's just, just 2X will get you a rough number. You don't like the block system in that game that much? What, Space Engineers? The bad thing about Space Engineers, I got 500 hours in Space Engineers. I hate how the players go faster than the ships do. Yeah, no, this is meters. That's why there's an S there, Sparkles. S, S for Sparkles. Uh, I think to get kilometers an hour, you, you times this by six, I want to say. Is it six? It's, it's something like that. 3.6. I know there was a 6 in there somewhere. What's up, Chivo? How are you, buddy? But yeah, the rover rover's pretty solid. It does a pretty good job if you want it to. See, so yeah, I'm going to hit the brakes on this. But yeah, that's that's different things you can do in the game. You can make you can make airplanes. I made a helicopter. I uh, I I can show you the helicopter real quick. I made I made a perfectly balanced Infinite electricity helicopter that I like flying around. Chilling after a stressful day. Cool. The helicopter, though, it, besides hacking and using the Kraken, you can only make the helicopter in a, a DLC, which is uh, Breaking Ground. Which is not a very good DLC, in my opinion. But... Like, if you needed a DLC for this game, I would strongly suggest making history first, because making history adds so much more to the game than Breaking Ground does. Uh, right here. Helicopter redesign. Go. Oh, Jiggy, I don't care, dude. <laughs> I want to fly the helicopter, damn it. It's a helicopter and an airship. We flew this around halfway around Eve. It was an 18-hour flight. It flew during the day, it flew at night, it had two Kerbals on board, it had to get them to the ship that was going to take them home, and then the ship that was going to take them home blew up and they all died. So, so check this out. The way this works is, there are these things called cow controllers, and they allow you to, um, pro almost like programming. So over here is our blade angle, so we can see what angles our blades are sitting at. Uh, this one is the RPM for the top blades. This is the top blade angle. I need, I need these windows up in order to drive this thing. Side rotor RPM. Okay, so, at its core, this thing is a helicopter. So we're going to put this at zero degrees. We're going to unlock the blades. We're going to get them started up. At 3.7... They spin to where they look like they're standing still, but that's because of how, how the game works and frames per second and everything else. So at its core, we have a helicopter. Oh, wait, wrong thing. I gotta do this. It's a helicopter, see? Legs go up, and then we can fly it. We can go forward, we can go to the side. We can go backwards. It, it's a helicopter. And we have it pointed in a certain way to keep it straight and level all the time. But let's say I wanted to go to the mountains, but I also just put a hot pocket in the microwave. And damn it, I really want a hot pocket. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the throttle. We're going to turn our blades right here on. And we're going to get this thing going forward. And I'm going to go get my hot pocket. You get up, you walk away. You go get your hot pocket. And your craft is moving across the surface. And you don't have to touch a thing. It's balanced and automatic. Now, here's the kicker. Our electric charge right now is... 
going down. So you have to make a, a concession of some kind. So you turn this down just a little bit. And now you're getting electricity. So now we have achieved infinite electricity. It's never going to stop. And I can go away. And there, there's our helicopter. This is what we flew around Eve. And it has a payload. Uh, it can carry up to five tons. This weighs about nine by itself. There's the RTGs. It has science. It has ladders. That way you can get to the science and check everything out. Here's how the Kerbals get in and out of the craft. This has a ladder. That way the Kerbals can climb in and out. It's like a blimp a I, I call it an airship, Chivo. I call it an airship. Because it gives me some Final Fantasy vibes. And from the top, it looks like a hornet. A little stinger. An aerodrome. <laughs> But we could definitely cut back on some of the batteries and like make the mass a little lighter. Uh, right now we are rocking 9.89 tons. So it's right at 10 tons. We could probably shave a ton off of it. But we really don't need to. So so then if I want to bring it to a stop, you're probably asking, well, how do you how do you land it? So what you want to do is you want to get your blade angle to zero. The blade angle is on a throttle, by the way, for the for the forward and back blades, which you might see the throttle. Well, you don't really, don't really see it moving 100%. You want to kill that. So now we're in helicopter. This is helicopter mode. Then you just want to bring your blade angles down. And then eventually the blade angles will straighten out. You'll see retrograde pop up here. That way you know you're dropping. There's retrograde. And you want to have retrograde right here on the center because that's where the bottom of your helicopter is going to be. And then you just put this to elevation. That way you can see when you're going to touch down. Put your legs down. And then you can land. The legs exist because of the grabber arm. If it wasn't for the grabber arm, you can land it on the on the base here. It'd be just fine. It, it, it's, it's, it's a little slow to land. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying it's the, it's the worst. But it makes for a, it's a very, very well built machine. A lot of people have a hard time with things like helicopters in this game. And it took me about 60 or so hours to design this. But now that I have it made, I can scale this thing up. I can scale it down. There, there are bigger blades than this. And we did try different blade sizes and all kinds of other stuff. It looks complicated. It's really not. A lot of these pieces are just adapters just to give it shape. It's really not that complicated. It, it looks way more complicated than it is. All you're doing is paying attention to angles. Your blade angle goes positive to go up, goes negative to go down. Zero means it's, it's you know, uh, neutral. We're coming down at 3.2 meters a second. That's a little high. We can... We can, we can make it ease up a little bit by making the angles of the blade go up a little more. What's up, Strayman? Welcome in. That way we can feather it down. We can come down even faster if we wanted to. And then straighten it up here towards the end. So you can feather it. And just get a nice little soft. Nice little soft. And boop. Put the angle at zero. Kill the RPMs. And there you go. And then and then what you want to do is take your kerbals, grab them at the hatch. Hold on. Get these guys out of here. Uh hatch, hatch, hatch. Say so transfer over to here. Bring the ladder down. Tell them the EVA. He'll pop out and just be like, doop a doop a doop. Or wait, hold on. There we go. And you can run around. We it's Jabby's here. And it should be able to just get right back on. Triple stamp. Uh which rotors? You you were probably looking at the fact that it was messing with the clipping. Here, I'll show you. Standby. 
Uh, side blade. I don't want the side blades. I, I just want the regular blades. Top rotor. Top angle. Blades. So these rotors are spinning right now at 216 RPM. Uh, they're now spinning at 350 RPMs. But you see how slow it looks because of... I can make it look like they're not spinning at all. So 382 RPMs. And then blade angle of 7. They just look slow because I have it turned right at where it meets up with the FPS of the game. Let's let's fly this thing back in helicopter mode. We're not going to use the, the other blades. I'm going to drive it like a real man. I want to get it back so I can recover it. Now get it to the mud. The highest this thing will fly on Kerbin is about 6,000 meters above sea level. Uh, on Eve, I can get it around, around 11 to 12,000. Yeah, but I can... This thing drives just like an actual helicopter. But I have it defaulting to radial out. That way you can transport it there. Transport what where? We we ballistically landed one of these on uh, Eve. Parachute and everything. Heat shields. We did it in hard mode. That was our hard mode playthrough. It was a bigger one of these. It was 14 tons. I redesigned this one after the fact. And we flew it for 18 hours, Straven. We had to go save Kerbals with it. How you doing, Dope Nose? Welcome in. But the whole uh, this pointing radial out is, ki is kind of cheating at the end of the day. But I think it's almost required if you want to have a helicopter that, jet that hovers. Otherwise, like if I, if I, if I turn this off right now... You gotta sit here and fight with the craft all the time. Because the way Kerbal does its its wings is the center of mass is always moving or center of lift's always moving around. It doesn't stay in one spot. That's that's the way the game does it, not how I do it. Cause this game this this craft is balanced. But boy, it'll it'll take you everywhere. So if I just do this and turn this on, we don't have to worry about anything. Then I can just fly it wherever I want. And say go. Bring this down, speed it up. No, oh, we're crashing. We're falling. Uh oh, pull up, pull up. Oh, we're gonna crash. I stalled it. I stalled it. You can stall it, it's easy to do. But yeah, that's my helicopter. It's fun stuff. <laughs> oh, it's okay, Jiggy. But yeah, that's that's that. All right, let's go. What am I working on? Um, refueling. We're refueling around Minmus. Let's go refuel around Minmus. <laughs> 